All right, welcome. Oh, damn it, that thing's been crooked for so long. <laughs> Welcome back to the Daily BA. My name is Ryan O. Monday through Friday, content for behavior analysts by a behavior analyst. Now, a couple weeks ago, I had talked about diving more into this book by B.F. Skinner about behaviorism. Today, we're gonna do just that. And so like other ones, first, we're gonna go through my opinion, then we're gonna go back to your questions, your comments, and see what you all had to say about the book itself. So Skinner was very good at laying down a groundwork and foundation of empirical data. That is one of the biggest differences and things that he was known for is lots and lots of data create his different theories and understand different concepts that he started to formulate when it came to behavior analysis. Now any good theory is going to rest on a certain foundation of philosophy. And so in 1974, Skinner wrote about behaviorism to lay that foundation itself. And this is about 40 years into the studies of a science of behavior. And that's a long time to not work out all your philosophic underpinnings. And so there was a lot of questions here you'd run into. If we flip in here to the first chapter, we will see that there are 20 commonly asked or stated implications of behavior analysis that he says are wrong and he wants to go through and answer why those things are wrong. And he does a great job at doing that in my opinion, a very good job. And so in this, Skinner talks about his philosophy of a science of behavior, and that is radical behaviorism. Radical here has a different meaning than we're typically hearing. It means all encompassing, essentially. It's whole, okay? And so some question whether or not that the term radical was the best choice for it, probably not. However, that is a meaning and I see why he selected it. Now the newer functional contextualism, which is typically held by contextual behavioral science, that is the ACBS community, Association for Contextual Behavioral Science, that is a, essentially like a re-walked out and aligned radical behaviorism with some different, with a few different core features in it. We'll save that for another video, it's the one that I'm a little more fond of. And it's not that different though than radical behaviorism and what Skinner posited in this book. And so as mentioned before, he goes through what are 20 questions or 20 different critiques perhaps of behavior analysis as he talked about it. And he goes through and makes sure that by the end of this book, each one of those have sufficient backing from his own investigations, his own analyses to provide with an alternative radical behavioral perspective of those. And in my opinion, it's very encompassing. He does a great job doing that. Now this book was a little bit tougher for me to read through. I've read through it three times. The first two times were really, really heavy on having somebody next to me and a mentor that I could go to or a group that I could go to and ask questions. So definitely consider doing that. Now this is also the first time I ran into a philosophy book. I did not have a history of reading and understanding different philosophies and approaches. And so that's probably part of the reason why. And so one critique that I do have about radical behaviorism as a whole is when you read through a lot of the different works, I don't think that the foundation is as tight as it possibly could have been. And one of those things would be the working criterion. Now I made a video about this in the past and that is the working criterion, the successful working criterion in behavior analysis. Something must work in order to be true and valuable to our science. Now that is a stated goal of Skinner's from the very beginning. However, it's not the tightest foundation and it's not always brought back into that perspective, much like functional contextualism does. So I lean on that side. All right, so it is a few days later. Uh, getting these things done is getting harder and harder. I have to squeeze in and find little times throughout my day to, to do this. So it's, uh, it's a quick lunch break. And um, now my rule is I first go to the folks that are supporting on Patreon. If you haven't heard about it, link below, check it out. And Nakia Dower here is the first person that commented. <clears throat> and she said, well, BFS covers nearly all the topics of behavior, including language, reasoning, and sleep, and explains them in parsimoniously behaviorist terms. To me, it pretty much makes Skinner's case to the world that our science matters. I would say, yes, he very much, uh, just by the nature of the style of the book, of how he included all these different things that people were critiquing, essentially, um, yeah, it covered pretty much the whole gamut of human behavior, not in a lot of detail, but yeah, it's all in there. That is definitely a good reason as to why it is a, a must read. Now the other comment was from Haley. Uh, thank you for writing in, first of all. And she wrote quite a bit here. So here we go. Reading about behaviorism was a defining moment for myself. It seriously put behavior in perspective, genuinely opened my eyes, and has made me the behavior analyst I am today. 
I am definitely one of those behavior analysts that can't turn off the machine. That is uh, me too. This book truly helped me look at my life and our world through the behaviorist lens. No doubt it was an extremely hard read, but I had to write a summary of each chapter for my intensive practicum. Then in my group supervision meetings, we would discuss our thoughts and reflections on the chapter of the week. I used to also do that practice with my mentors and other uh, smaller reading groups, highly suggest it. Um, not sure if there's a solid amount of research on there, but just about everyone I know that's done it um, has had a lot of success. Uh, could be a correlation though. And I'm sure it's because they, there's a lot of other things that they're doing behaviorally. Um, that said, having to write chapter summaries really helped me process the information, reflect upon it, and apply it to my practice. It's, in, it's insightful reading about how our field came to be what radical behaviorism truly is. Again, like I said, it was hard to read quickly. You cannot skim it, take the time to read it. It's so beneficial and a life-changing read. And I would, uh, to kind of summarize there, I would say, uh, yes, it is quite beautiful what behavior, radical behaviorism started to become and be. And I really personally love the way that uh, it was kind of taken and altered a little bit by the functional contextualist folk from the contextual behavioral science uh, movement. I'm gonna link it here. And then uh, she left a little little thing in here about behaviorism by Skinner and Coercion and its fallout, which is by Marie Sidman. I will be covering some of his books soon. Uh, were her top two favorite books during school. And I'd say yes. So I think that's about it. Thanks for chiming in. Thanks for writing in. If you haven't already checked out Patreon, it's starting to grow. It's, it's really exciting. I like to listen to y'all's feedback. And there's a lot of behind the scenes and other content I'm dropping in there. So. I think that's it. That's your daily VA.